Hey everyone, Poindexter here. In this video, we begin our second mission in the game America Bomber, Evil Queen of the Skies. Our first mission saw us bombing the Corning Glassworks in New York. Our bomber took some mild damage and we shot down four American aircraft. Our crew came through the mission untouched. Today, our target will be the Chelsea Pump Station in New York. The target is located in Zone 5. Our crew is all set and ready to go. Atlantic Pride is loaded up with bombs and ammunition, and we take off for New York once again. We move into Zone 1, where we rendezvous with our fighter rescue. We proceed to Zone 2 and roll for an encounter. And it's a 7. Two P-80 shooting stars, which we ignore since they are land-based aircraft. We move into Zone 3. And it's a 9. Two P-80s once again, which we ignore. We move into Zone 4, and our escort peels off and returns home. And the Americans are nowhere to be seen on a roll of 8. We move into Zone 5 and our target area. We roll for an interception, and the Americans finally show up in force. Three P-80s are heading our way. The first bandit is on approach 9, a vertical climb. This pilot is a veteran. The second bandit is in approach 3 from a high position, and this bandit is flown by an ace pilot. The final bandit approaches from the nose level position, and this fighter is also flown by an ace pilot. It appears the Americans did not appreciate our attack on New York on our last mission, and are sending some of their best pilots to defend her this time. Unfortunately, this puts us in a tough position. The two ace pilots will cause one extra random hit if they strike our bomb. But the more serious issue is the fact that ace pilots get a minus one modifier to any guns that are targeted against it. In approaches one and three, we must roll a six to hit. But with the ace pilots, we add a minus one to the die roll, making it a five. Since there is no way we can roll a six, it will be impossible to hit these bandits. So there is no reason for us to bother targeting these aircraft. This means we are defenseless against these ace pilots, and will have to hunker down and hope that the pilots are not very good shots. However, we can target the bandit in the vertical climb. Kranz in the ventral turret fires at the climbing P-80, but misses on a two. Now the seasoned American pilots get their chance to attack. The ace pilot in the nose position moves to long range and fires, and misses wide on a one. The approach three bandit moves to long range and fires, and misses on a two. The veteran bandit in the vertical climb points his nose skyward and fires, and he also misses on a two. And this bandit peels off and heads for home. The ace pilot in the nose position moves to medium range and fires, and it's another miss. The approach three bandit moves in for the kill, and barely misses on a roll of five. The nose position pilot moves to close range, and his final attack. Another optional rule comes into play here, where all hits at close range will cause one extra random hit. Our crew braces for the attack, and the bandit fires, and misses wide on a one. But we still have one bandit attack left. The high-flying ace swoops in and fires at close range, and he also misses on a one. Apparently, these pilots were excellent flyers, but poor marksmen. Relieved, our crew watches the P-80s fly past and out of the fight. Atlantic Pride now begins her bomb run. Flak over the target is medium, and we roll a 10 for flak hits. 
we add a minus 1 for the medium AA, minus 2 for the AA jammer, and minus 4 for the two chaff canisters for a final minus 7 modifier, and three flat hits are scored on the bottom. We take a hit on the starboard wing, which only causes minor damage. The second hit strikes the port wingward, and the final hit strikes the nose and knocks out the oxygen pressurization system. The bomber must now descend to a lower altitude, but what's worse is that we add a plus two modifier to the next flak roll. Regardless, Atlantic Pride begins her bombing run and arrive on target. Dropping our payload, we score an impressive hit on a roll of 11. We add a minus one modifier to the total for a final 10. 50% of our bombs land in the target area. Another mission success. Atlantic Pride, out of position and at a lower altitude, leaves the target area and begins the long journey home. First, we must endure our second round of flak. Fortunately, we roll a two, light flak, but we add plus two due to our oxygen system being knocked out for a final total of four, which increases flak to medium. We roll a five for the number of flak hits, but with the minus one flak modifier, the minus two for the AA jammer, and the minus four for our final two chaff canisters, we make it through without any hits. We leave the American coast behind and fly into zone four. And we roll an eight, no contact. We move into zone three and the protection of our fighter escort. And we roll a 10, two Navy F-8F Bearcats. One bandit attacks from the rear quarter at level altitude. This pilot is trained. The other bandit approaches the nose position at high altitude, and this pilot is also trained. We roll to see if our fighter cover drives off any bandits, and a six means the escort is ineffective. Both bandits will be attacking. We're going to split our fire between these two bandits. The nose guns and top front turret will target the Approach 1 Bandit, while the mid, aft, and tail guns target the Approach 6 Bandit. Oswald and Eichel fire at the approaching Bandit. Eichel in the front turret misses. The co-pilot Oswald manages to score a hit. A 2 means the fighter has been damaged. Kleiner, Sauer, and Lorenz all fire at the tailing band. And all three turrets hit, shredding the fighter with gunfire. Kleiner damages the fighter, but Sauer delivers the killing blow and is credited with his second kill. But it's not over yet. The damaged Bearcat moves to long range and fires, and scores a hit this Bearcat rolls a 1d6 for damage, but we apply a minus one modifier to the final die roll. And we roll a three, which is modified to two. And the Bearcat scores two hits. The first hit strikes the weapons, which damage the starboard waste guns. There is no waste position on our bomber, so the hit is treated as no effect. The second hit strikes the weapons again. And, again, the non-existent starboard waste is struck, which means no effect. Since the Bearcat is damaged, the Bandit makes no further attacks and breaks off. We move into Zone 2 and our final encounter. And it's a 9, two P-80s, which are land-based and ignored. We make it to the safety of Zone 1, and we roll for weather and an eight means it's poor weather. This will add a plus one modifier to the final landing dice roll, 
but we also apply a minus one modifier since our landing receiver is working, which leaves us with a net zero modifier. And a roll of six means we land safely. Atlantic Pride took fewer than six damage hits, so she is repaired and ready for the next sortie. Overall, our mission was a great success, but we did get lucky. We were intercepted by formidable American pilots over the target and only managed to escape because the ace pilots attacked from a poor position, which made it difficult to hit our bomber. Despite the damage to our oxygen system, our bombing run was excellent, and the target was severely damaged. We also scored another kill on the way back home, and took very little damage. Let's hope our luck holds, and continues on to our next mission. Thanks for watching, we'll talk again soon.